we don't die and love never dies and we are never alone and why even in the, in the loneliest moments you can just send a thought out to your loved one and they will feel it and they will respond back. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world right now. I am Louisa, your host. Her world was torn apart by the sudden death of her fiancé. Karen Frances McCarthy was a skeptic until her loved one began to communicate from the other side. She realized that death is not the end, but rather a gateway to a whole new world. Karen is a medium, author, and public speaker. This is her story, and this is her passion. Karen Frances McCarthy, welcome to Passion Harvest. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thank you, Louise. I'm really excited to be here. There's so many particularly afterlife topics that I'd love to discuss with you. But first, I'd like to start with um, how it started with you and the death of your fiance. So I had no beliefs whatsoever. I had long since left the Catholic Church that I was raised in. And um, so after he when he died, I was just sort of sitting there in Virginia in this old house trying to write this book when um, all these odd things started happening, you know, like furniture creaking and moving and lights turning on and sort of feeling things touching me and apparitions. And, and so initially, of course, I my first thought was I'm losing my mind. I'm having some kind of breakdown. And so that was just mind blowing for me. And what I started realizing afterwards was that, you know, all of, you know, it became sort of like learning a new language uh, between he and I of how do we continue to communicate and in what way, what's, what way does this relationship continue? You know, cause obviously it's, it's, it's not the same, but, uh, and so that was just sort of this long learning curve of trying to understand how do you maintain this relationship then in this healthy way and of course also what had happened was I started receiving information and visits and stuff from other people's relatives because it's just sort of like oh blew out blew this thing open but it had been something I had experienced as a small child and just sort of grew out of and with this it sort of came back and other people would come along with messages you know so it just became this really really interesting the grief process also was a very, very interesting time of awakening, I would say. Was there a culmination of events when you thought, well, maybe this is real? Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff happened and it wasn't just seeing stuff out there in the world. It wasn't just the sort of physical stuff that was happening around me. It started to get to a point where I was starting to see things in my mind and having experiences getting information in my mind which you know made no sense and i would have to research it to get these answers and and a friend of mine said to me at one point god he really gets the journalist in you because he gives you these cryptic things that you have to go then investigate you know i would wake up with letters or words and foreign languages in my mind and i would have to do this research to try to find out what they meant and when i would do this research i would get to the heart of what this message was and so a friend of mine said, like, he really gets the journalist in you, you know, that he gives you these cryptic things that you'll then go and investigate to get answers to them. So there was a lot of stuff, sort of a critical mass. There was just one thing after another going on. Um, first, it was like, what actually, you know, first, it was a very nebulous sort of thing. Oh, something, survived, but what survives? You know, mm -hmm. just because the furniture was moving didn't necessarily mean that was him. You know, so I went through that of, of, OK, have to recognize something that's beyond no, what we consider normal is going on here. Right. So I had to accept that first. And then it became, OK, so what is it? You know, I didn't immediately go to this is him, mm -hmm. you know, but I started to be able to see the mark of his personality more and more on the events that were happening. And that eventually went, God, this really is you. And that was the really, that was the real eye-opening thing. Yeah, what, I mean, what an incredible realisation. As you mentioned, it's not the same. You can't, you know, 
physically touch like in humanness how is your relationship now with your fiance well you know the thing about um the thing about the physical touch is, is that that's just something we're conditioned to do you know when you um are when you are able to when you're able to work with the energy to such a degree and when you're able to blend with somebody you can actually feel them because you are it's almost like it's like when I'm working with mediumship with other people you sort of blend and sort of assume the the nature and the personality and the character of that person you sort of begin to embody that person because you're blending so closely with that person your thoughts are shared because there's no separation the intimacy of that relationship is far, far greater than anything that is possible in physical form. Very, very interesting. Um, and and your fiance, who you have an ongoing relationship with, what ha, ha, has he provided you information about what happened when he died? And these are two questions. And what is the afterlife afterlife like? Well, people always ask me that, does he, and I have to say, and you know this, because we've talked about this before, my, my sort of go-to position on anything is very, very pragmatic. Mm -hmm. So I, will also, I always tend to reflect on what information am, am I being received, am I receiving, and how is that being colored by my perspective? Right. Right. And so I've always felt that, you know, I'm, I'm very much aware of the, uh, I can, I'm very much aware you know, other people have my mother's in the spirit, my father's there and I a lot of people have since passed the spirit world. But the the thing about the nature of the afterlife is that I'm very much aware of him and now the others as well. And I can feel within him subtle changes over time, the way we change. Mm -hmm. And so I do know about the afterlife that we can, we, I do know there's a gathering. I know, and I've, this has happened a lot during COVID, especially when people couldn't get to the hospital and they thought their loved ones died alone. They've come to me and what I've, what I found is the gathering, there's, there was a gathering of loved ones from the other side there, even though there was no physical presence, physical, physically present. And that those relationships continue. And a lot of the times those relationships heal. I know this from just working mediumistically. And I know from sensing him that he has changed, thankfully, in some ways, over time, right? In terms of what does the afterlife look like, to be honest, that's beyond our frame of reference. So our language has been designed to express and convey what was within our reality what that's what we have we have a word for everything we understand yes. so stuff we have we is beyond our frame of reference we don't have a word for so it becomes very difficult first of all to start trying to explain this because it's ineffable and so i do feel lots of people you know we and what what the mediumistically people show is an approximation in terms we understand so what What's my granddad doing? He's fishing. He's showing me he's off fishing. Well, we know he's not fishing, but he's showing us fishing because the feeling of fishing is what he's trying to approximate to convey how he feels. So I'm very reluctant to talk about the nature of the afterlife because I feel all I'm doing is filtering it through my own lens. Right. Does that make sense? Do you, do you see it does. I mean? And again, it's so, so hard to put into words in our human perspective as well. I mean, we're, I mean, one thing that's almost impossible for us to comprehend is the concept of no time, for instance. And these are things that you have to experience. You can't explain what it's like to have no time, to not be moving through time. So right there, it's like, how do we, you know, it's, to me, it's fascinating to me because I'm more, I'm really interested in the experience of these things. So how do you convey the afterlife, for example, when we know there's no concept of time there? Because we can't, we're not able to understand what it's like to not have the next moment. So we're stopped, we're stammered right there trying to understand the nature of this, which some people really want and need to understand something in very tangible terms. And I know the people who've done out-of-body out experiences and near-death experiences come back and can convey these things, but but really what's important there is the experience and the feeling and the sensation. It's like if we have a dream, mm -hmm. 
we're moving through fragments and all sorts of plausibilities and implausibilities and we just have this knowing about things in our dreams without anyone talking to us we can meet people in our dreams but rarely do we sit there and watch their mouth move it's almost we meet people in our dreams and we just sort of know by some form of telepathy what's going on in that dream right so that to me is closer to my experience of the afterlife than anything I can explain in kind of tangible terms, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it does. Um, have, has your, did your, has your fiance ever conveyed to you that he chose his point of death or it was his time to transition? Um, no, he's never, we've never really talked about these sorts of pre-birth <laughs> things. Um, it, that honestly would be out of character for him anyway. Okay. You know, so um, he he's sort of as pragmatic as me. It's like, all right, here we are. Now let's get on with it. What's next? You know, the sort of what can we do? And 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 so I mean, a lot of exp the other thing too is like the only reason I do I work me work with mediumship now or work with my mediumship now is because he passed. So sometimes I have these sort of notions of well, you know, if he hadn't have gone. We wouldn't be doing i wouldn't be doing this work and he wouldn't be able to help me with it either so to me it sort of just reasonably makes sense that this could have been something that was agreed upon if mm -hmm. if we agree you know if we if you want to some people you know some people believe that we have these pre-birth plans and certainly this is one that would stand to reason as, you know, in terms of now our ability to contrib contribute to the well-being of other people in the world. You know. And and with your relationship, are you able to, I'm probably not using the right terminology or the words, but are you able to call on him at any time? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And my mother, you know, is, is a great example of this, you know, because these relationships exist with all of those who are, who are, um, who, who we've loved somebody asked me recently you know is everybody around us all the time and i was like no it's it's not that you know it's like when we're here walking the earth everybody's not around us all the time the people we are living closest to are around mm -hmm. us all the time and other people will pop in from time to time which just seems to be the same way these relationships continue i've had my high school teacher secondary school teacher pop in some and i haven't seen her since i was 17. But um, I was so happy when I heard from her. She, and just occasionally she'll drop in. If she's got a message, something to tell me that I need to hear at that point in time. Right. What I have realized is that there seems to be a knowing from those in spirit form because of the nature of the single stream of consciousness that we're in that is much more apparent when we're out of the body. Um, that they know when we need to hear something. And then the person who can best tell us what we need to hear will pop in to give the message, if that makes sense. You know, th th see, the thing is, I suppose if I explain it this way, a lot of the time people think that um, they are thinking of their loved ones. They're just thinking of their loved ones. So mm -hmm. you're just wandering around and you suddenly have this thought out of the blue. You could be trying to park your car and then out of the blue, some memory or some thought of your loved ones which pops into your mind. And then we think, oh, I've just bizarrely out of the blue remembered something about my loved one. What's actually happening there is that they're thinking of you and you felt their thought touching your mind. It's not always us thinking of them. A lot of the time we're feeling them thinking of us. And that could be also true of other, other physical relationships as well, not only non-physical. That very true, Friends. yeah, particularly if people are quite, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, people are very sensitive. We hear this all the time, you know, I was, you somebody get a phone call, like, I was just thinking of you, you know, this happens a lot. It seems much easier, obviously, and much more frequent out of the body, because obviously that's the, na the natural form of the communication, that te telepathic communication. Mm -hmm. But certainly, yes, it can happen. Of course, it can happen here. We're all part of the single stream of consciousness, really. We just think we're separate, right? We do. We're all connected. I guess you get this question all the time. Are, are my loved ones happy? I'm just going to use the word happy on the other side. Well, I would say that um, we don't just sort of go from here to there and sort of sprout wings. To, I mean, I know that sounds a little facetious. There is, it's a continuum. 
and so you know this is why i don't really i i'm loath to use the world the word even spirit world because it sort of implies there's this world and then there's someplace else i just feel like we just step back into it i Thich Nhat Khan, the zen master explains this um similar well he uses the metaphor of the ocean which i love which is makes it easy to explain is that we are all in the ocean and we arise as a wave and we return to the ocean and to me that makes is a much easier concept to grasp in terms of how our consciousness continues mm -hmm. and so it's not like we go someplace else or we become something else we just continue and so you'll find that you know people will come to communicate with the loved ones here and they're exactly the same as they were especially if they've only recently passed you know so i had somebody the other day and he was such a cryptic communicator and i said god he's just so cryptic and he said it's exactly how we've always been that cryptic but this is the nature of how you communicate it you know almost like and the so, personality absolutely the personality stays the same and it's like the personality here we have our personality and it changes because we're not the same person now we were 20 years ago our personality changes slowly over time and that just continues and i've noticed that in my loved ones in, in that life the personality changes over time healing happens over time growth happens over time more or less the same way as it happens here we change we grow we heal over time and that um so obviously the physical issue um is not is no longer there but um and, I, and you know sometimes people are just so relieved to be rid of it so happy mm -hmm. to be out of the body and rid of all of that you know um so are people happy I would say there's not, we don't just get there and go, oh, this is fantastic. You know, oh, joy. it's there are people there. I mean, there are relationships that still need, there's probably people there in the spirit world you'll meet that you had cantankerous relationships with that now you just sort of have a chat and reconcile, or there are issues you carried with you in your life that now you may see more clearly to reflect upon, to heal from. You know, I had somebody whose father was very abusive. It took him 20 years to come back, to be able to explain why he behaved the way he, he did to his daughter and to be able to offer a real apology based on reflection and growth. Yeah. So, I mean, how, how does mediumship work? How, very big question. How does the non-physical, and you spoke about consciousness, connect with? us in our physical humans consciousness before i answer that can i just say one thing to please to the previous thing yeah. if you can i just want to say in terms of i've never come across an unhappy person in the spirit world you know i've never i've come across people who have are experiencing regret or remorse for how they behaved and they come when they when when we sit with them in a mediumship session it gives them an opportunity to voice that and in voicing that and then making reparations to their to their um, loved one here it helps them also in their growth and their healing so it's not just the apology for the person here to make the person here feel better just that act in and of itself can be healing for them and allow them move forward as well so in that sense i would say it's not quite as simple as happy or unhappy but I've never come across a happy person, but I've certainly come across people who are over time and some faster than others. Healing and, you know, wanting to come, wanting to come back. Like I say, come back again. These are, this is like language. The problem with language. It's like, we're there where we've moved forward. We come back. It's like they visit. Let's just say they visit. Yeah. They come to visit because they want to express something to help the healing of their loved one and for them as well. And, and that sort of also lightens the load for everybody. We carry an awful lot of trauma. And we know from, say, the work of Peter Levine that trauma isn't only, um, you know, that we carry this trauma in other ways. We carry it in our body. We carry it in our nervous system. And so it can take time to release this and heal for this. What I have noticed is that continues and it continues apace. Some people will, will, will heal faster, some people are slower. It depends on the nature of the person. So, very interesting. So now should I hop back? Sure. How, how, so, how, how does it work? <laughs> so you, you had asked, how does mediumship, do you know something? I really, 
I, I don't know exactly. Um, I can tell you how it works for me. Um, it's almost like, again, it's like I invite somebody. Now, talking to my own loved ones is a little bit different from talking to other people's loved ones because I know them, the blending, is there's a familiarity there. When somebody else comes, I sort of have to get to know their loved one and get, you know, as, as the session goes on. I mean, how it works, I just send out an invitation. So if you were coming to me for a session now, and I would just send out an invitation. Well, Louise, I'm inviting all of Louise's loved ones who would like to speak to her to come blend with me, to come share this space with me and share with me whatever it is you want to share with her. And so what happens is, again, to go back to the sort of dreamscape analogy, it almost becomes like on one like I mean you're in two places on one hand and sort of here sharing this dreamscape with the loved one and just knowing things feeling things seeing things sensing things hearing things and putting all of that together as we interpret a dream is the closest analogy I have to trying to describe it and then we come out of that and we can understand oh you know all of these abstract things happen in our dreams but somehow we understand them right Mm. very similar and so then you're here you're getting that in front you're trying to hold that space and the space with the person in front of you because then you have to interpret all of that and translate it into the english language so it's sometimes the inevitability of those experiences can be very difficult to sort of translate the sort of complexity and the nuances because i'm a writer um i tend i tend to manage the complexities and nuances of the person's character better just because I'm a writer, actors, I'm sure would do this as well. Um, you, you sort of naturally predisposed to sensing and feeling into the nuance of character. And sometimes that's what makes people most aware that it's their loved one speaking because they can sense and feel the personality and the presence of them. More so than he drove a blue car and he worked as an electrician or whatever. It's that presence when you just embody the person and embody this dreamscape that makes makes the, it, the translation of the experience possible if that if that makes sense yes well it's, it's, it's a great gift and obviously it must alleviate a lot of suffering for people hopefully so yeah i mean that's certainly um it's certainly what i really try to do and again it comes back to you were asking earlier did did johan feel that this was his moment to go i don't know but i do feel that if he hadn't gone we wouldn't be able to do this work now and i mean this work is transformative it's not just it's not just transformative in the sense that it, it helps people heal rifts, it helps people heal, it gives people the reassurance that their loved one is fine and okay, especially when you can sort of explain who they're with and the pet and the dog and the horse and everybody else that they loved, you know, are sort of popping in and out there. It's beautiful, you get that real sense of community. But there's also, as I said, there's a lot to be said, like during COVID, there's an awful lot of pain there mm. because people couldn't be with their loved ones at the end and sort of imagined the worst. And so for the loved one to be able to come back and explain this to them and explain what it was like and explain who had come to visit and how excited they were to see them. I mean, it really makes a huge difference to people's lives. For those who are listening and um, would like to receive some signs or some symbols or communicate, try in some way to communicate with their loved ones, what, what, what could you advise them? Um, well, first, there are, well, one thing I do offer, if anybody wants to come, and I think we've got a series of three of these coming up on Saturday mornings, Eastern, and they're free. It's these events open, offered by the Global Afterlife Groups in Australia, you're near mm -hmm. you. And um, uh, we do work with some of these. So the, the, the most important thing is, is to be open. The one thing that everybody thinks is, well, I saw this, but did I imagine it? And so doubt is the one thing that creeps in. So you some, in some ways you need to sort of suspend disbelief for a while until you can start to recognize it. The simplest thing to do is ask for a sign. So even if you have no mediumistic ability, you can still ask for a sign, you know, so you can ask for something that would say that person, you know, and so it will come in many different forms. Like my father, I used to get doves used to show up 
but doves are just white pigeons, right? They're albino pigeons. But my father used to raise pigeons. So when every time I saw a, an albino pigeon, a dove, a peace dove, I asked my dad, you know, I'd ask my dad for help and I'd see this, this bird. And so ask is the first thing to do. The second thing to do is to be open. And to really, it takes some time to get rid of the doubts. Oh, maybe I imagined it. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. Yeah. But keep asking them and just be open to it. That's the hardest thing to do. The other thing, too, is being still, meditating. Really, what makes mediumship possible is an ability to adjust your energy level, your energetic state, what we call a state of attunement, to being able to raise your vibration, to meet. And you can feel the energy shift when you sit in these. And it's to sit with an attunement practice. It's like a meditation. It's more energizing than a meditation. But it's to sit with these practices. It helps you develop the sensitivity to be able to sense and see. And you might just feel it like a feather on your face or a touch or a tingle. Um, but this is the energy of your loved ones. When you increase your sensitivity, the energy of your loved ones, you can feel it touching your energy. And on my website, I actually have some of these attunement practices, which are free if you know, just come and join our community. These are all free if anybody wants to sit and explore these little practices to help um, develop their sensitivity. So it's not one thing, mm -hmm. but certainly ask, be open, you know, sit, reflect on your doubts, trust your loved one, trust, trust, trust. And then sit if you want to develop sense. You don't need to be sensitive to have that sort of mediumistic sensitivity to see signs out in the world. But if you want to start feeling the energy touch yours or start to feel their presence with you, um, I would say sit, you know, daily, at least three times a week, I would say, adopt this sort of attunement practice as a meditation practice and incorporate that into your day. Oh, well, they're great tips. Thank you for sharing that. People also ask me, okay, you know, I have received signs, but how do I know what it means? How do I have that next level of understanding yeah. or communication? Well, that's the message. Yeah, that's the intuition. That's the intuition. And again, it comes back to trust. You need to be able to, um, we, we're in a society where it's all about reason and rationalization. But the truth of the fact is that intuition is the language of the spirit. And so you need to be able to learn to develop your intuition, trust that intuition. Um, like I said, you know, if uh, some people will see a robin and go, that's my grandmother. But if I saw a robin, I would never think, oh, that's my dad. But when I see a, 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 a peace dove, which again is, a, as I said, it's a pigeon, homey pigeon, um, that's, you know, if I ask my dad a question and then I wake up and I go into the kitchen and I see a peace dove sitting on the the on the windowsill oh first thing but that's my that's from my dad it's my dad saying he's heard me he's going to he's on the job you know um the the loved ones will tend to give you um signs that in some way are associated with them that's the other thing that sitting with these attunement practices helps it helps us to understand and recognize our own mind moving we begin to become very familiar with the movement of our own mind, which is what happens when we meditate. Um, and so that it becomes very clear when some other thought is touching our mind. So with Johann, for instance, he was German. So I will hear German words. Now, I don't speak German. Right. And so I know it's the same if it's a German word. But again, to start hearing this information within the spirit incarnate, really you need to be able to, to have an attunement practice for that sensitivity. For signs out in the world, it's a matter of asking. And then the responsibility is on you to really reflect on your own intuition, which again, I think the best way to do that is a meditation practice, mindfulness. It begins with getting to know yourself. I mean, this is a whole other subject, probably for a whole other show. Yeah. How do we develop our intuition? But um, it begins with trust, trusting yourself, trusting your loved one. Um, it's almost like in a way at the beginning, you need to just believe, you need to make the choice to believe, and then it will become more apparent as you go, as these signs will start to resonate more. It's all about intuition and resonance. Mm. So I know some people are going, am I, am I terrible intuition, but that's the first order. That's the first yeah. order of business. The trust, trust, you know, do you, the question is, do you trust yourself, I guess? 
yeah yeah because we go with we sort of talk about instinct a lot but instinct always also unless it's instinct you know there's there's a lion chasing me down the street right our instinct is to run right but sometimes the normal things like we can we can you know walk into a store and or we can sit on the train and we suddenly have this feeling like oh I, this person i don't like this person's there's something wrong with being in the in the line mm. behind this person we move out of the way um and that's our intuition our clairsentience as it's called mediumship so our intuition telling us something feels strange here and we have to learn to trust this and we learn to trust it incrementally it doesn't happen overnight but the more we listen to these feelings the more we pay attention to ourselves when we feel good have you ever walked into a room and felt oh it just feels lovely in here sure intuitively and clairsentiently you're feeling the energy in that space and vice versa you can go into a room where maybe there was a terrible argument just before you were in there and it's long gone but you walk in and you feel the imprint of that energy in the room it's your intuition your clairsentience this is the language of the spirit this is the language we need to allow ourselves to speak and trust it's ineffable it's all about feeling um, but that's where it starts I love it. Thank you for sharing that. That was beautifully said. Thank you very much. Um, I've asked all the questions. Is, is there anything else you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience? Well, I would just say it has been beautiful. It's been lovely chatting with you here this, here this, well, this morning where I am. I know it's the afternoon where you are currently. Um, I would just say, you know, just be open. Just know that, you know, um, we don't die and love never dies and we are never alone and why even in the in the loneliest moments you can just send a thought out to your loved one and they will feel it and they will respond back whether you feel that initially or not trust that they have heard you and they will respond and they will find a way to let you know how much you are loved and to trust that love never dies and we are never alone I feel like clapping. Yay, that was such a beautiful way <laughs> to end the show. Karen Francis McCarthy, thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. And, and oh, my pleasure. Thank you for the work you're doing. Oh, my pleasure. And do if anybody would like to, you know, as I said, if you want to sit, work with your own attunement, work with your own sensitivity, please do go along to my website. It's just karenfrancismccarthy.com. There's lots of free resources and everything there. That you're welcome to sit with work with and try out so please do that and i and i will put a link in the show notes below as well oh, beautiful. <laughs> thank you so much karen <laughs> thank you louisa lovely okay. to see you i hope to see you again soon okay bye-bye right. bye-bye if you liked this episode please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews